Um, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to give the talk and, and to be here this year. OK, so the, the title of the talk sounds um, complicated. But so first, I want to tell a fun story about ecology. OK, so the, namely, the, the PDE that I'll be showing um, arises as a model to describe the following situation. So in the 1930s, some toads were introduced to um, northeastern Australia. So toads. <laughs> There's more. I'm going to draw a picture of one. <laughs> and you see they were introduced to eat some bugs in some sugarcane fields. And usually invasive species, they invade territory at a constant rate. So the diameter increases the same amount every year. So it was expected that it would go something like this. They start out here and then increases about the same amount every year. But in fact, um, what happened, um, so you know, if I had slides, I could show you act like an actual um, map of Australia, but I'm not going to do that. Um, every year, their territory increased more and more. Okay? So this is very uh, unusual. And in fact, what's been happening in the past decade is like around here, there are homes and stuff. So not only are they uh, invading ecosystems, but because they're actually going into people's gardens, they're poisonous, people in Australia care about this. So, so they've devoted a fair amount of resources to studying these toads. And scientists, biologists there, have found that the toads at the edge of the front, so in the newly occupied regions, have longer legs and can travel faster in a day than the toads, um, say, in the original population or, or somewhere back here. So the hypothesis is that there's some sort of interaction between this um, uh, spatial dispersion and this evolution of this motility trait, say length of legs, that's responsible for this unusual um, acceleration of spreading. Okay. Uh, so the PD that I'll I'll write down. So it's for this function um, n of x theta t. So x is space. Um, in R, we'll say t is time, and theta is this trait. Um, so the PD is as follows. It's an evolution equation, a, a diffusion equation. Um, the spatial dispersion is modeled uh, like this with coefficient theta. So the bigger your theta, the bigger your legs, the more you're dispersing. Um, evolution um, or is modeled by muta like random mutations, or in other words, diffusion in, in traits. And there's a rea reaction term. OK, so what should the reaction term be? OK, so, so first, this part models that the more toads that there are in a place, the more they'll reproduce and make uh, more toads. The second term usually models something like a constraint on the growth of the population by the environment. So if there are too many toads, they stop growing. However, in this situation, somehow all the toads in a given location are competing for the same uh, whatever sugar cane. So um, that means that for this competition term, I have to somehow count up all individuals in a location, regardless of their trait. So that's, that's where this um, non-local term comes in. So in fact, um, I've already told you the main way to think of front propagation. Um, this is a reaction diffusion equation. Here is diffusion, here is reaction. And we see the non-local term. And again, this we can think of this as some sort of minimal model for um, what the ecologists saw. And in particular, can we see, so uh, as I'll explain in a minute, in a classical uh, reaction diffusion equation, you really do get constant rate of spreading. But in this one, can we see accelerated spreading? That would be great. It would show, it would give some sort of um, justification to the ecologist theories. Um, so I'm going to call this equation, um, I guess, Kane-Toad's equation. So 
Um, let me, um, before I go on, let me say that this trait theta lives in some big trait, trait space theta, which is also a subset of R. And the behavior differs whether, depending on whether this guy is a bounded interval, say 1, 2, um, or an unbounded interval, 1 infinity. Uh, the important, one important point in both is that this, <coughs> this guy, is, the bottom, is bigger than 0. Um, but you get different behaviors in these guys. OK. So, so a classical uh, reaction diffusion <coughs> equation, maybe the classical, <coughs> is the Fisher KPP equation. So it's Fisher, Kolmogorov, Pet Petrovsky, and Piskunov. And all in 1937 um, introduced, and so this guy, independently from these three, introduced and studied the following PDE. Um, so mt minus mxx is m uh, well minus m. OK. So um, and I should say, in both of these uh, cases, we, we think of initial data as being non-negative. And, and in both of these cases, the solution continues being non-negative. Um, so again, here, this model spatial diffusion of, of the population and subject to this um, reaction term. So what, what do we, uh, what are some facts about this equation? So, so the fact um, number zero is that this equation enjoys comparison principle. So what does comparison principle mean? It means if I start out um, if I start out with two different initial data and they're ordered, then the solutions stay ordered for all time. And the way that you prove something like this, or okay, and this also has maximum principle, um, which gives bounds. So how do you prove something like this? Essentially, it uses the fact that it, at a maximum, a function's derivative is zero and second derivative is is less than zero. But if you try to make such an argument with an equation with a non-local term, you can't. So that's why that guy enjoys comparison principle and maximum principle, and this guy doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. is yes. Mm -hmm. um, great. And in fact, then it stays between 0 and 1, because 0 and 1 are our solutions to this guy. So, so these facts. Uh, and the, the next two that I will write down were also established in, in 1937 uh, by these uh, folks. So this equation admits uh, traveling uh, wave solutions. Um, so what does this mean? Um, this means that there is a function, let's say zeta, of one variable, such that if I put in x minus alpha t um, for alpha greater than or equal to 2, um, there is a zeta such that uh, this guy is solution. Probably I should write it the other way. There exists a zeta. This is solution. Um, so what's the main idea? Or what does this mean? This means that I have a solution that looks like this. And the zeta, it sort of connects 1 and 0, and it, it, it really looks like this. That it, my solution looks like this at time 0. And as time goes on, my, my population um, moves just like that. This is positive. Okay. And another fact is that. Um, any uh, solution, solution to KPP with some proper assumptions on the initial data um, spreads uh, with speed 2. So te technically, it's sort of, 
if you fix a level set, then that level set travels with speed 2 asymptotically, so for large, uh, large times. And how do you prove something like this? Well, um, for KPP, you use this first bullet, in po bullet point and comparison principle. If you have some initial data, you can trap it under this special traveling wave solution, and you know it'll never escape. And you have, yeah, and you have, okay. So, <clears throat> my reason for explaining this is to say that this strategy very much doesn't work for this Kane toad equation because there is no um, comparison principle. So, let me say um, what is known for, for this Kane toad equation. So, for Kane toads. So, will the colleges be disappointed or will they be pleased? Okay, so as I said, it depends on um, this trait space. So, if, if theta, the trait space is this bounded interval, um, so it was, um, so some of my work on this was to study this and to show that in fact um, solutions are bounded. And Disappointingly, perhaps, um, so spreading at constant speed. Okay. Um, okay. However, uh, the situation, so I'll, yeah, um, the situation where the interval is unbounded, that is where um, acceleration uh, is found. So I'll write a theorem. So this was pop one, uh, Henderson and Rizik, um, I think 2017. Um, so in this situation, so so you have accelerating, so solution spreads at accelerating rate. So that's great. Um, so in their paper, the rate they didn't, they could show that, so let's say front, front is around something like a C t to the 3 over 2 but they are not sure what this constant is. Find that if you replace this integral term with just n itself, then the front would be at exactly uh, 4 thirds t to the 3 over 2. But without that, um, you don't know. So um, my very recent work, so this is with Calvez, um, Dumont, Henderson and Mirahimi and myself um, in 2018. So we can say that front, so again, asymptotically and in some sort of slightly weak sense, front is at um, some quantity. So we drop the sign, and you could say really exactly where it is, and we know the value of this number. And the value of this number is less um, than 4 thirds, namely less than what you get when you don't have this <coughs> integral and just have the n. So this shows, OK, so we know, um, we know more precise information about the acceleration, but we also see the importance um, of how this non-local term influences the, the propagation. Um, somehow if you, and also, um, right, so maybe I shouldn't say, shouldn't complete the and also, um, because I'm almost out of time, but I just want to say what are uh, my, my goals here. So no bounds are available for this case, or no global bounds. So that, that would be, that is an interesting question. Um, also, we really don't know what solutions look like. Um, for a Fisher KPB, you really expect that they, for a long time, they do look nice and, and monotone like this. So we, 
we suspect this numerically, but we, we don't know. And more, um, I guess generally, um, so my goals are theme, so study, let's say propagation in equations, let's say with a non-local, I wouldn't say term, but non-local feel. So in other words, um, things like systems of equations where you don't have comparison principle, free boundary problems where boundary behavior affects things on the inside and vice versa. Um, and if you're curious, if this method doesn't work, what does, you can ask me in person later. Okay, that's it. Thank you.